Okay, for the final piece, this is after you've made your dough. I want to show you how you can actually use that dough to make a battery. And for this example, I'm going to show you how to make two batteries that are essentially the same type of battery, just using a different type of cathode. So we're going to be making a battery called an aluminum air battery that uses oxygen from the air and aluminum from aluminum foil to create an electrochemical cell. Now you notice I've got two pieces of dough. I'm going to just put the rest back in the bag. It's still actually kind of warm. This dough is going to ser serve as our electrolyte. If you're a chemistry student watching this, the word that your textbook might use is called a salt bridge. Essentially what that means is the dough is going to act as an ion pathway to allow for charges to be able to move between the cathode material and the anode material. So the first step I'm going to do is kind of flatten out a little, I guess I want to call it a chemical tortilla of this dough that I've made, this conductive dough. And I'm just going to make it thin and round. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want any holes because that will lead to a short circuit in your battery. A lot like those videos you might see on YouTube where people have computer batteries that short circuit. Uh, any electrochemical cell can be short circuited and at that point it doesn't work anymore. So we've got our salt bridge material, our electrolyte. We also need our anode material. In this case we're using aluminum. For our material it's just aluminum foil. I just roughly tore small pieces. These are about uh, three and a half inches by three and a half inches as well as I could estimate. So we're going to take that aluminum foil and put it on the bottom. We're going to take our little electrolyte layer put it on the top in both cases. And now we need the cathode material. And the cathode material in our case is going to be activated charcoal. You could really use any carbon source. You could use graphite. Pencil leads would work. Um, for example, here's a really, really big example of a pencil lead. This is just a, a graphite electrode. It's just essentially carbon activated charcoal. This is powdered form of activated charcoal. Uh, that's going to serve as our cathode material. So all we really need to do in this case is press this onto the electrolyte. And in the second situation, it's a little bit different. Since this is a powder, you're going to be careful because it's going to get all over the place. If you don't have a spatula, now's the time to get a spatula or a spoonula just so you can get a small amount of activated charcoal. I'm going to take the activated charcoal and I'm going to spread it out close to the edge. It's almost, it's almost like you're making an electrochemical pizza at this point with the tortilla that you've made. So you don't want the two materials to touch if you can help it. And now we've got a point where we almost have a battery. Well, actually, we do have an electrochemical battery. Now we want to be able to see if it actually does what an electrochemical cell does, which is produce a voltage. So to do that, we're going to hook it up to a piece of equipment, and that's, that'll be what I show you next. Okay, now to make our cells, we're going to end up making kind of like a little electrochemical cell burrito. But what we want to make sure doesn't happen, we don't want the aluminum foil to come into direct contact with our graphite rod or activated charcoal. That would cause a short circuit. So as you do this, make sure that as you roll, which is very simple to just kind of roll it up here, you can move this a little bit, you don't want the two materials to come in contact. I'm just going to roll it and you'll notice that, see if I can focus this, that the two materials are not touching and we've got kind of a little burrito, a little burrito shaped battery at this point. For the second battery, it's pretty much the same with one exception. We need to provide a means to conduct the electrons that are going to be produced in this oxidation reduction reaction from the electrochemical cell. So to do that, I've just got a little piece of copper wire. I'm going to take the copper wire and put it in contact with the charcoal. And then as I roll, same, same rules apply. You don't want the materials to touch. You might actually want to cut this a bit before you go and make it.
Okay. Now we've got two burrito batteries ready to be tested. Okay, so I'm using Logger Pro and a couple of probes to be able to test for the electrochemical potential. That's the voltage. And you'll notice that we're starting out with a voltage of zero, which we should. Uh, the, the basic setup is, you can see down here I've got a little GoLink, which is um, a piece of equipment from Vernier. And I've also got a Vernier um, differential voltage probe with two leads. And the way to make this work is you're going to take your battery and then you need to hook up your battery. One of the electrodes, just kind of chomp onto, in this case, the graphite rod. This is the easiest one to be able to measure. Now you don't want that to touch the aluminum, but you do want your other probe to touch your aluminum foil. And if you touch that, if the battery is working, we should see a voltage. So let's go back up here and look at that. We've got a potential of around 1.12 volts. Uh, it might take a while for it to normalize or, or become steady. So if you wanted to do experiments, you could actually do a lot of interesting experiments on how the electrolyte affects the performance of the battery. Remember the electrolyte was the material that we used over here, that conductive dough that we made. Right? I'm sure that has some role to play in the ability of charges to move through the cell. So there's got to be some correlation there between maybe thickness or area. I don't know. You can come up with all kinds of experiments for it. But there you have it. The way that you take carbon, activated charcoal, aluminum, oxygen from the air with some conductive dough, and you make a battery. You notice actually right now, Wow, the performance, the battery hasn't, hasn't lasted very long. Hmm, wonder if there's ways that you could figure out that would change the performance.